Welcome to another edition of Padres and Pints. We are here in Peoria, Arizona, and our special guest today is Dan Hayes from North County Times. Thanks for joining us, Dan. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you may notice the uh, bearded fellow over here is not Bo. It is Jeff, actually. I was totally confused by that. Too. <laughs> Just call me Bo. It's okay. Behind the camera, Avenger in Chief. Good morning. And afternoon. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. We're here at the Fox and the Hound. A uh, very nice sports bar. There's TVs galore everywhere. A little bit earlier, the Aztecs baseball team was playing behind us with uh, Craig Elston with his soccer scarf on. Um, but anyways, so we had some breaking news recently. You had some breaking news. Uh, tell us a little about the Cameron Maven contract. That was that was actually really nice. I think, and I, I think for you guys, it was probably the nicest thing is that Padres committed to somebody, and and we're talking about. December of 2007, since they committed to somebody, you know that was a great year. Um, you know, Adrian Gonzalez got his contract in March. Chris Young got it in April, and, and Jake Peavy got one in December. And then the whole John Morris thing happened, and money went away. And the Padres were so promising then. I mean, I remember that was my first season on the beat, and there was just so much talent in the in the organization. It was all veteran talent, and it just disappeared. And it's been obviously a struggle. I know that 2010 was a, a good highlight, but you know, there's there's good things happening now. I mean, you just look at the mini camp, and you look at who's in camp right now, and there's a lot of young talent. And so the Padres, I think, finally have turned that corner to where they're committing to stuff. And Cameron Maven is a great player to commit to. I mean, you look at a guy who who embodies everything you want in an athlete. You have a stud of an athlete who patrols center field, and and he's a great guy too. And he wants to be the base of the franchise. And I think the Padres did a good thing by locking him up. You guys can probably speak to it a little bit more, but it, it's got to be just refreshing to see the team do something that's seen so positive there, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a move in the right direction, for sure. Yeah, yeah very exciting. As the uh, Avenger in Chief said uh, not too long ago, he said, it was, every year the Padres had a good team, they always had a solid center fielder. You know, Mike Cameron, uh, Dave Roberts, you know, Steve Finley. You know, so it's good that we lock up somebody young and uh, pretty much a team-friendly deal, too. Yeah, that's an uh, outstanding deal. You look at the amount, he's never going to be paid more than $8 million. And you know what? If, if he lives up to what they say he's going to do, it's going to be like Adrian Gonzalez. It's going to be like Christian where I know Christian was hurt, but those guys lived up to and outplayed their deals. Um, Christian, especially in 07 and part of 08, I know he got sidetracked, but... but you got an ace for those couple of years at great rates. That's the that's the beauty of these kind of deals for teams like the Padres. You just have to pick and choose who you're going to make your gambles on. And I think this is a good one. Yeah, definitely. So you've been here for, uh, how long have you been in spring training right now? This is uh, coming up on just over two gloriously long weeks. <laughs> so uh, you've been here, you've seen all the players out there warming up and taking batting practice. So who's uh, who stood out to you? Uh, you know, I, I really think that Yasmani Grandal is somebody that we were we'd heard so much about after the trade. Uh, the guy has tremendous power. He's uh, he he hits both ways with power. He, I was impressed uh, with his batting practice. But then I've heard from coaches and seen a little bit how he's kind of working to clean up everything. He had 19 pass balls last year. You got to clean up the defensive side if you're going to be Bud Black's catcher, and you've seen that a little bit with him. Um, Alonzo, uh, Yonder Alonzo is just a good hitter, and I think that's something that we'll get to see over the course of this year. Is he he hits good pitches. He doesn't hit mistakes. He hits pitchers good pitches. Uh, I'm not gonna say I didn't steal that. I, I got that from Bob Scanlon there today. But you know, you, it's great to listen to a, a former pitcher, and he notices those kinds of things. Alonzo was hitting the best pitches the guys were throwing, which when you're facing Tim Lincecum, when you're facing Clayton Kershaw, those guys. You're not going to get very many mistakes, so you better better be swinging at their good stuff, too. And I think that's a good guy to kind of put in the old lineup. So those two stood out. There's so many pitchers to talk about. It's really it's hard to differentiate until we get into games, I think. Yeah. But there's some impressive guys. And Andrew Kashner has been, you know, stood out for that talent. So I, I, I look forward to seeing how that plays out in games. Yeah. I'm actually looking forward to seeing Andrew Kashner, too. I didn't see him pitch at all today or warm up or anything. But, uh, you know, from everything I've heard from you and Corey and Bill, and you know, it's, it all sounds really promising. 
it's the gas is just phenomenal, but it's not the only thing he's about. I mean, as a slider and a changeup, he feels equally comfortable with throwing. I mean, the guy was a starter. He wants to probably return to starting, but he's he's focused on the bullpen this year. I think that's going to really stick with it, um, and it should help him stand, like kind of step into that role because he's not very experienced. Obviously, he's only got the, the full year in 2010, but um, he's going to be asked to do a lot this year. I think he's got the stuff to do it, so we'll see if he can handle that challenge. Do you think he could uh, fill in a closer role at any t at any point in time? Somebody's going to have to. Uh, Houston Street's been injured in five of seven years, and obviously it's the one thing the Padres don't have a proven guy that can step in there. Adams was obviously so dominant in those yeah. couple of years. Um, that's a very big question. We'll see how that pans out because you've got a lot of kind of unproven. I know Luke Gregerson's been around, but obviously last year wasn't his best year. He didn't have that out pitch anymore. The slider was gone. There's that. That needs to happen again. You know, the bullpen, while I like the, the formation, the guys that are there, there are questions to be answered, I think. Yeah. Uh, what about some of the younger guys that maybe we won't necessarily see this year but that have impressed you again? Uh, Robbie Irwin. Uh, you know, we, we could see him obviously later in the season. It just depends on how the Padres' season unfolds. And if they go on the tank early, I think that you could see some of the pitchers traded off because they have Robbie Irwin, they have Joe Whelan, they have uh, Casey Kelly. And Whelan and, and Kelly, have, or uh, Whelan and Irwin, have been just very impressive. Uh, you know, I, I watched Irwin closely, and his breaking stuff just it, it fooled me significantly. And then you hear Orlando Hudson say, man, those pitches are, the velocity is far more deceptive. You, you look at it from the side of the cage, and you know, maybe you're guessing it's like 89, and then you get in there, from what he was saying, obviously I haven't been in there, and looked like 100 to me, but uh, <laughs> he, he basically was fooling those guys and they were fouling off pitches, and I think that those are some of the younger guys that really fans have a lot to look forward to. So uh, we're uh, T minus, uh, let's see, what time is it now? 35 minutes, 35 minutes. minutes, 40 minutes before the kickoff of the 2012 Better Cup. Why don't you uh, tell uh, tell everybody a little bit about that for the uninformed? Well, is there anybody left that's uninformed on this thing? I mean, the whole world knows about it, right? It's pretty it's much. Big. It, it's a it's, it's a big, big deal. It's a very big deal. <laughs> Seeing as I'm championing it, too, I hope the whole world knows about <laughs> it. No, um, I mean, we, I think it's a pretty good long-running joke, long-standing joke between Padres fans and Mariners. It's the natural rivalry, and what do they play for, really? I mean, I remember Detroit's uh, natural rival was the Diamondbacks a couple years back, and that's, a, that's as equally a, a joke. Uh, but, you know, what do the Padres and Mariners really have other than the fact that they play at the same complex here in Peoria? They have nothing, so let's, let's make something up, and, and any better happens to fall in that category. Any better was... You know, a San Diego guy through his, his formative years, and then he went to Seattle and made millions being the lead singer of Pearl Jam. And I mean, what and city he's gets a Cubs fan? And yeah, exactly. He's a Cubs. <laughs> really throws another wrinkle to this. And you know, but but what team would he root for? What team? And what team is his? And can they claim him? So I think I think it's a good idea. I mean, the Better Cup is out there, and whatever team wins the series gets him. Just hasn't looked good for the Padres the last couple of years, but <laughs> that all ends this year. That's right, it's ours. I hate the Mariners. Ugh. Oh man, <laughs> don't even get me started. <laughs> I mean, I can just tell the intensity that you guys feel oh, about yeah. this rivalry. It's uh, it's huge. It's, <laughs> and I think that's the only reason why we did it is it's just sort of a flaw series that's on the schedule. And it's not like there's NL West standings attached to it, so let's make something up to add in. It's kind of fun. And, and the good part is people in Seattle are on board with it, too. You know, it's not just a San Diego creation. Nice. Now, don't we have to think that perhaps the Padres have a good chance of retaking the Vetter Cup now that Michael Pineda has gone from Seattle? Doesn't this open up a, a window? I, you know, it, it probably has a good chance, but Seattle, I think, has added some offense this year. You know, Montero is going to be a guy that they needed, and I think that... He's similar to Alonzo, where I think everybody expects him to step in the lineup and do something for him this year. And so that could, 
you know, shift some power. We might have an offensive uh, better cup. Nah, not really. Nah. But it might this be five crazy to four. It might be five to four this year in, in four of the five or six games there. So. so you don't you don't sound too bullish on the Padres' opportunities I, or their chances to take it back. I think the Padres can. I mean, there's definitely much more talent this year, but I think Seattle's talent too. So it's you know, I mean, it's hard to say in March what these guys are going to do uh, because I I think the Padres potentially have a chance to be. And it's hard to say this, but I think their ceiling is 500 or a little bit above. But, I mean, obviously you want to be optimistic. I think that's a good thing to be aiming for this year. You just have so many new faces in it. And you're going to be a young team for a couple of years, but the talent is there. And, and in a couple of years, this could be a very dominant franchise. You just look at the guys across the minor leagues and, and wonder what they can do in the majors. So, but to get back to it, yeah, I. I I think the Mariners are in the same place. So, you know, they they, they went a little young, too. I mean, they have a good veteran top of their lineup, but Sean Figgins needs to show up. And who knows what's going to happen with these teams. But it's probably worth pointing out that as holders of the Vetter Cup, they have a certain psychological advantage oh. against against the Padres. And, you know, that, that can't be understated. Well, and, and I'm sure when the Padres show up at Safeco this year, the uh, large poster of any better that will be left in the visiting clubhouse <laughs> to remind them of such thing. That's probably going to be more, you know, make them a little terrified. I think it really gets real when they get to Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, being that this is Padres of Pints, um, let's talk a little bit about beer. We're in Peoria. Where do you come for uh, to get a, a beer, a nice beer? Fox and Hounds. They got some good selection. There are a couple San Diego beers, as you can see. I'm enjoying a nice West Coast IPA here, and uh, I saw there was a, a stone on the, uh, the list, and i got some Scheinerbach, yeah. and some local Santan right here. It's definitely got the, the choices, and like you said earlier, there's a ton of TVs, and if I'm going to watch Aztecs, which it's hard to pull me away from the TV when San Diego State's playing these days, this is where I like to go, just because they always kind of set you up with the TV. So. All right, I think uh, you are ready, officially ready for the Padres of Pints, rapid fire. Question one, Dan. Yes. Since San Diego and Seattle have been on our minds here, better beer, San Diego or Seattle? San Diego, without question. Yeah. Easy. Question number two. Better trophy name for a rivalry game? The battle for the better, better cup or the red beans and rice bowl? I'm going with the better cup. I mean, it's solid. Do you have any familiarity with the Red Beans and no, Rice Bowl? No, I do not. That's uh, Central Arkansas versus McNeese State College football. I, you know what? I missed that game this year, too. I was really <laughs> upset about that. It happens. It's the ESPN bias. <laughs> Question number three. The Pearl Jam song that best describes Cameron Maben's game, Animal or Elderly? I'm Nathan, Nader Tater from Gasland Ball, handing off to Rick, RJ's pro. Uh, I left my little mark on here for good, the little pads with a few pins that I got. It's got my name on here, the dates that I had it, and uh, the burden is passed on. And very fittingly, we're eating breakfast right now. Since San Diego is breakfast Sandy town. Breakfast you know. so. Cool. All right. Well, we'll take care of it. Is that the, uh, the Dave State in Jersey that I've uh, been reading about? It is the one and only Dave State in Jersey. Oh, wow, I think it was like 6'4", 215. Didn't they retire his number? They did retire his number, and as you can tell, I am 6'4", uh, 214. And this is the uh, 
the sisterhood of the traveling jersey from Gaslamp Ball. Uh, we just wanted to make sure uh, we give it a little shout out here. And sure. where has the traveling jersey been so far and in the presence of who has it been with? The traveling jersey has, it was originally with Nader Tater of Gaslamp Ball and uh, he's a Yuma resident and uh, he got his picture taken with it with Gary Templeton. Um, and uh, I haven't had my picture taken with anybody yet. And I ain't even listen to rap and you can quote me on that. And you can check your facts, don't even play this back. This plays another track. Supply them what they buy cause they know that I be putting it down. And I ain't even listen to rap and you can quote me on that. And you can check your facts, don't even play this back. This plays another track. Supply them what they buy cause they know that I be putting it down.